Let us talk about elastic potential energy. This is the energy that a deformed object, a compressed or an extended one, may possess due to its deformity. And for this, okay, we are just simply going to understand or remind ourselves of Hooke's law. I must put a caveat here. We are looking at the uh, elastic potential energy possessed by objects that obey Hooke's law. All right. And so if you remember, for an object that does obey Hooke's law, if we look at the force extension graph, it will look something like this. And so, again, right, we are just going to make this assumption that the work done by the force F, okay, assuming that the kinetic energy of the object doesn't change, which it probably doesn't, and you're not uh, bringing it, using that force to raise it or anything, and all of this force is going into deforming the object, and hence the work done by this force is the change in the elastic potential energy of uh, that force, sorry, of that object. And uh, remember that the work done by a force is the area under the FX graph. And so if I consider some initial extension x1 and some final extension x2, then the change in elastic potential energy is the area under the graph, okay, between the two, the final and the initial extension of the object. And so we can say that the change in EPE is simply the area of this trapezium, okay, over here. And so that would be half, okay. Uh, let's put it this way. Okay, so we have to take these two things. This will be F2, this will be F1, okay. F2 plus F1 times X2 minus X1, okay. But remember, right, that... Uh, we can use Hooke's law, F equals to Kx, right, to get it in terms of the spring constant. And so F2 is simply Kx2 plus Kx1, x2 minus x1. Okay, we can factorize, factorize out K, so that would be half K x2 plus x1 times x2 minus x1. And of course, we know that that simply is half k x2 squared minus x1 squared. And that's the generic formula for the change in EPE for an object that obeys Hooke's law.